It's Chicago Sports Radio 6-7 to the score, and we're thrilled to welcome in Bears offensive coordinator Ron Turner. Ron, thanks for coming over to our RV. Oh, <laughs> great setup you guys have here. Living in style. Yeah, you got to like that couch. That's a little fantastic. football weather, a little crisp in the air this morning, kind of the way you like it uh, down in training camp, not 90 degrees. Yeah, definitely the way the players like it, no question about it. Uh, we had that humidity, that heat humidity last week, but um, they, they're loving it this week. Well, you won't be surprised that the, the guy that seemed to generate the most interest out of the game on Thursday wasn't the left tackle that wasn't there, wasn't the quarterback battle among the two guys you expect. It was Caleb Haney, who a lot of people loved and thought, hey, this is a guy, we had a guy call up and said, would you give him a run with the first team? And I, <laughs> Never <laughs> well, too early well, you start got, on the third string you, quarterback. You kind of have a quarterback competition going on. I don't know that you have enough of those to go around. Uh, what, what's going on with the quarterback competition? What can you tell us about it? Well, you know, really the same as it's been. Both guys are, are competing. Both guys are, are working hard and uh, staying extremely focused. We've said all along that what we're looking for is consistency. Who's going to do it, you know, day in, day out, um, perform uh, consistently well, making the right reads, being accurate with the ball, doing all those things. And uh, really both guys have stepped up and, uh, and are doing that. How do you evaluate that, Ron? Because I heard you say you know, now we have some tape to look at in a game situation. Yet yeah, it is Kansas City. They're in a rebuilding or a transition mode, it seems like. And... Uh, the offensive line acquitted itself very well, and and I think you know both quarterbacks played pretty well as as, as well. But how how do you evaluate that being the first preseason game and where you're at in camp and how much stock do you put in that? I guess is what I'm asking. Well, you know, we What's do that? put a little more stock in the games and we do practices, but again, you know, we're evaluating it over the whole process, you know, what they've done through the OTAs, and mini camps, training camp, and obviously you know in the games. And they both did a nice job in the game um, last week on Thursday. Um, didn't have a whole lot of opportunities, just the way the game went. We only had seven plays in the first quarter, and just the way the game went. Um, but what, what, when opportunities came up, they did a nice job. They made the right reads, they threw the ball well, and they'll get another opportunity Saturday night to see, and then, um, then we'll you know, sit down and see where we are. He's Ron Turner, the Bears offensive coordinator. We're talking about the quarterback battle. We'll get to the offensive line in just a minute here. Uh, but sticking with the quarterbacks, uh, Rex said that, that he knows that there, there's been this, he called it a gap in performance from, from the good Rex, bad Rex thing as we call it here in the media, but but from the really good games to the poor ones, there's right. been a, a gap. And that's what he has to close in order to win the job. Uh, Orton says for him, it is about uh, showing that he's getting better, about getting better. He feels like he's getting better at every practice. He has to show you guys the improvement, which will make you think the improvement will continue, and then you'll go with him. Are they are they are they accurate in that? I mean, is that the way you look at it? And and, and what specifically with these guys? I mean, you talk about Rex with the with the with the accuracy. And he's he's a, he got a better deep ball. Kyle is a guy that's been, that's controlled the ball and not turned it over. Yeah, exactly. And, and exactly what Rex said. You know, what we're looking for is consistency. We talked about that from day one. And coming out and just being mm -hmm. making the right reads, being accurate with the ball, making the appropriate throws, yeah. all that, making the right checks, getting us out of you know bad situations protection wise if we need to or run wise whatever just just you know running the offense yeah. on a consistent basis and that's what Rick is talking about you know he's had spectacular games as you know and he's had some games that so, good. so we're just looking for that consistency and I think he has he's done a great job of, of coming out being very focused every day preparing himself in meetings and uh, and being focused every day and Kyle you talked about him he said he needs to come out and improve every day and he has and He's gotten a lot better. He's improved the areas he needed to. He, he's getting rid of the ball a little bit quicker, and he's improved his accuracy. He's lost some weight. He's moving around a little bit better. So the areas that he needed to improve, he's addressed as Rex has. And I'm sure you're earning your money, Ron, uh, this season more, this training camp more than ever, because we're talking about a quarterback competition. I don't know how many teams in the league are really looking at a 50-50 proposition right now yeah, in the second, third week of camp. And also, Molly mentioned the offensive line. You know, what you envisioned it to be on draft day mm -hmm. has certainly not uh, turned out that way because of the injury of Chris Williams. So now you have to wonder how example. the pieces fit there. Um, how is that going to all come together? And again, uh, they, they did put themselves pretty well on Thursday night, but uh, what's that going to look like opening night? Well, you know, as far as who's going to be there, we're not sure yet. You know, we're, we're going to wait and see. And he said Chris Williams, you know, we drafted him, anticipating him to come in. And, and I know everyone else speculated he was coming in and was going to start at the left tackle position. You know, we as coaches looked at it and say, you know, he'll come in and, and compete for that position with John St. Clair. John wasn't going to go away. He wasn't going to give him the job. And John St. Clair has performed, you know, really well. He's played well since he's been here. He's played right tackle. He's played right guard, left guard. He's played about everywhere. And when he's played, he's played pretty well. So he's he did a nice job at left tackle in the game. So, you know, we feel good about him there. And then with, you know, Terrence Metcalf's injury, you know, going out and uh, Josh Beekman stepping in. We'll you know, continue to evaluate and see what he does, but he did a nice job 
on uh, on Thursday night competing. And you know we got some young guys that, that we had last game, and we got this game coming up. It will be a huge test on the road against a very good defensive team with the crowd noise and everything else going on. It'll be a little different environment than what they had on Thursday, so it'll be a big test for us, for and a good opportunity for us to evaluate some of these young line. When, when making the announcement about uh, about Chris Williams. Uh, Scott Hagel told us, well, they're, they're keeping a spot open for him on the 53. Lovey said the same thing. Jerry said the same thing. You believe Chris Williams will be coming back, although the, the return time from an injury like that, from surgery like that, is, is pretty long. Um, how long is Terrence Metcalf? I mean, could you conceivably go into the season holding two roster spots on the 53 for linemen that may or may not come back? Um, you know, you hope not. You hate to do that because now you're down to 51 man roster, you know, which in every one of those numbers and spots are, are so valuable. Uh, but I don't. I don't think they'll come to. I don't think Karras is going to be out that okay. long. Yeah, he should be back. Um, well, where's that? What I'm hearing, you know, in time to prepare for the first game. Because he had a scope, right? He, had, exactly. he actually had, had the knee cleaned up, and I guess the, the, thank God for mo modern medicine. Those things uh, you can you can get that done, and you can play. I guess a few weeks later. Yeah, exactly. That's a plan that that Terrence will be back shortly. We're hearing a lot about Josh Speakman's name, and uh, so far your evaluation of him. You know, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but I guess if his heart's bigger than the body, that's all that really matters. I mean, you know, can grasp what you're trying to teach him here. Uh, you're going to depend on this guy, it sounds like. Yeah, definitely. And, um, you know, you're right. You look at him, you say, yeah, he doesn't look like an NFL lineman, you know, but when he lines up with plays, he does have a lot of heart. He competes. He's very determined. Uh -huh. And um, he's got good uh -huh. technique. And, you know, still learning to play the game, you know, at this level, the speed that you have to play it. But he's got good leverage. You know, size helps with that. He's got good leverage. He uses that to his advantage. But he also has very good quickness and a like smart it. player and just a very, uh, very determined player. Outside of Caleb Haney, maybe the guy that got the most buzz in terms of people calling us was Garrett Wolf, because Garrett Wolf had some nice performances. Now, uh, it's interesting, you've got Kevin Jones now off the PUP list, and Matt Forte, we know, has the starting job. Uh, AP has. Adrian Peterson has looked good and is a as a special teams player around here. How is that competition going? That's another competition that, that we haven't talked about. Yeah, we've got a lot. Seem to have a lot of them on offense. You know, you look at the you know, offensive line. We've got battles going on. Receiver, we have stuff going on. Uh, running back, you know, uh, you've got good competition there because Matt Forte, as you said, has come in, done a real good job at all the OTAs and, and mini camp. He started training camp. Everyone has right. seen in a game. How he responded in a game, and he responded very well. And uh, Garrett Wolf's having a great season too, great off season in the training camp so far. He's playing at faster speed, a different level than he did a year ago. A year ago he was coming in trying to learn everything, he was thinking about everything. Now he's relaxed, he's playing, and, and he's shown the quickness uh, that we knew he had. And, and what he did Thursday night didn't surprise us because he's been playing that way all camp. And uh, so we're excited about him. Adrian Peterson, we know, is a very good football player. He's got a role on this team. Very valuable role on this team. You know, obviously a great special teams player, good third down back, and, um, and definitely is, is a good football player. And now we get Kevin Jones in the room, so we'll see. Uh, could you, could you keep them all? Where there. Is that possible, if, Ron? If you if you opted to go with one fullback, could you keep them all, or is, it, is there a battle there in terms of the roster spot? I mean, I know Lucas Bleed is another guy that has done pretty well for you, and, and hasn't McKee been banged up a little bit? Yeah, he's been a little bit banged up. Um, he's healthy no, now, but his knee was bothering him a little bit, but he's no, fine. And, uh, yeah, and, and Lou Soccer Polite's been doing a nice job. Yeah, playing. Cliff um, Yeah, he's been doing a nice job at the fullback. And, you know, P.J. Pope looked good in the game Thursday right. night and is right. having a good training camp. So we definitely have some good competition there, and feel, you know, we're going to have some talent and some depth in that position. Is and, it? and, yeah, we could keep keep four and one fullback. You know, I mean, a lot of, a lot of different scenarios, a lot of different possible ways to see what happens.